name is Audrey Scott, and I know a lot of you, but for those that don't know me and I don't know you, I'm glad to see and meet you today. I am the chairman of Chesapeake Charities Foundation, and we are very, very grateful to have each and every one of you here today to support our causes. We represent close to 100 nonprofits here in our service area, which includes the counties that abut the Chesapeake Bay and even some of those beyond. And uh, it is a privilege to represent the nonprofits that we work with. They do so much good and affect so many people in our um, communities. I want to um, say thank you to the to the good man upstairs because it's not raining, it's not snowing, it's not sleeting, it's a little chilly, but it's warm in here. So uh, spread the warmth and spread the joy. Um, at this time, I would like to ask Reverend Amor Woolsey to please come forward. She is the pastor of the Queenstown Calvary Methodist Church, and she will ask the blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. I invite you all to be in an attitude of prayer. Almighty God, we first give you thanks for all you have given us and for gathering us here to celebrate and bear witness to those who have given so much of their time and talents to making this world a better place. As Fred Rogers once said, all of us at some time or another need help. Whether we're giving or receiving help, each one of us has something valuable to bring to this world. That's one of the things that connects us to our neighbors in our own way. Each one of us is a giver and a receiver. Thank you, O oh Lord, for giving us these good neighbors, neighbors. Thank you for Claudia, who has given so much of her time and efforts to the Anne Arundel Medical Center Foundation and has helped to improve health care in our community. Thank you for Compass Regional Hospice, who through their values of respect, trust, compassion, and commitment has ministered and cared for countless families around the Chesapeake who has faced terminal illnesses, grief, and the impending loss of a loved one. We give you thanks for the women of the Chesapeake Women's Network, a band of sisters who inspire and lift up others. Through their works, they have helped open doors for other women and their families to become driving forces in their communities. We also lift up to you the Chesapeake Foundation, Chesapeake Charities Foundation, an organization that has impacted this community with so much good. May you continue to sustain them to, to do the good works that they do. Oh God, as we honor them, let us honor you as well. We lift up to you this celebration and may you bless it abundantly. In your mighty name we pray, amen. This marks Chesapeake Charity's 15th year. And uh, that is a the thing that's amazing to me is that it's only 15 years because it seems like we have been involved and um, creating um, energy in the community for so many years. And it, it 15 years that doesn't seem like that long to me. But um, this is our fourth awards luncheon. And it's something that we started to um, outreach, and it has been such a tremendous success. And of course, the success is because of you, and especially our sponsors. And so uh, we really want to recognize all those who exemplify the qualities of leadership, community service, and altruism, because that's what this is all about. We're able to bring you this celebration because of the support of our sponsors. And on behalf of the Board of Directors, I would very much like to recognize that sponsors and to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts and thank you from all the people who are going to benefit from this event. Our platinum sponsors, the Chesapeake Bay Beach Club, John and Deirdre Wilson, who are our saints. They are absolutely our angels and we, we wouldn't be here without them. So John and Deirdre and the Chesapeake Bay Beach Club and all the staff, thank you, thank you, thank you. And also 
I want to recognize Charlotte Davis and the Rural Maryland Council. Charlotte isn't here, but the Maryland Rural Council is. And we thank them too. Their involvement on the Eastern Shore is significant, and they have always been a willing partner with us. We thank the Rural Maryland Council very, very much. Another platinum sponsor is Pat Mager and the WHBG Certified Public Accountants. Pat, thank you again, a continuing supporter. Our gold sponsors, Betty Buck from the Buck Distributing Company was on her way here and there was a crisis at work which happens when you own a business and she was very, very sorry but she wouldn't be able to be here. Customer Relations Metrics, GGM Wealth Advisors, I know they're here, the Marksman Company, and Shore United Bank. Thank you again from a very grateful community. Thank you also to all our sponsors at the silver, the copper, and the bronze levels. Those names are listed on the inside cover of your program. Please acknowledge them, recognize them, and thank them. It is sponsorships that make this event possible and make our participation in the community possible throughout the year. I have the very great privilege of leading the Chesapeake Charities and the dedicated board of directors. And I'd like those members of the board who are in attendance today, which is just about all of them, to stand and please be recognized. Elaine Curl, Paula Warner, stand up. Paula and Elaine also uh, serve on the executive committee with me. Our board members, Mark Anderson, Ozzy Kulhagili, and I never, did I say that right, Ozzy? I didn't. <laughs> Here's Mark, there's Ozzy. Um, Jody Gray, who's a great addition, and Diana Waterman. <laughs> You probably recognize most of those names because if you want a job done, you go to a busy person. And all of those people are so involved and wear many hats. Our event committee was Jody Gray, Selena Barrett, Martha Kendall, Jamie Kirkwood, Paula Warner, Ann Welch, Deirdre Wilson, and again, the staff that supported our every action, our every move, and our every thought. Linda Cola, our executive director, Mary Ann Gleason, Paige Tillman, Barbara Schreiber, and Laurie Ireland. They did an outstanding job putting this, we get the credit, they do all the work. And thank you, staff. <laughs> now I'm going to turn the program over to our executive director, Linda Cola, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about our organization and then we'll do the awards to our honorees. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey, and thank you all for being here today. So she told you this November marks Chesapeake Charity's 15th anniversary. In that time, we've awarded grants totaling $15.5 million, a little more than a million a year, and brought in $17.8 million in donations to support the work of the more than 90 charitable funds that operate under our umbrella. What we do at Chesapeake Charities is ensure that every donation you make is used for its intended purpose. We write the checks, pay the taxes, balance the books, do the audits, celebrate the accomplishments, and make connections so that every new philanthropist knows they're part of a whole network of people vested in the health of this community. We also have a stellar grant and evaluation office that secured an additional $10.65 million in the last five years since we got started. So, now, you may know a little bit more about our funds than you know about us, and that's okay, because they're the ones who rescue stray animals, provide after-school programs for youth, build trails, teach children struggling to learn. Chesapeake Charities has funds in eight counties from Anne Arundel, Calvert, and Charles on the western shore to Queen Anne's Kent, Caroline Dorchester, and Talbot on the eastern shore. So we do a lot of traveling. Now, some of the people we work with come to us because they have a dream to make things better. 
They want to build a new playground or create a dog park or provide scholarships for higher education. Others recognize a problem and want to work toward a solution. They clean up the rivers that lead to the bay and help minority students achieve. They feed the hungry, house the homeless, provide gifts for children who might not otherwise have them at the holidays. And some people come to us after a tragedy, the loss of a child or the diagnosis of a terminal illness. I cannot put into words what it feels like to watch someone honor their child by making this world a better place for other people's children. They are angels on earth. Now, I'd like to ask you to think about what kind of, of a philanthropist you'd like to be. Philanthropy is a lot more than writing a check. It's donating your time, providing a skill, sharing your abundance, and reaching out to someone in need. So to encourage you, I'm going to share the top five benefits of giving to charity. Research, and here at Chesapeake Charities we are all about research, suggests that giving to a charity benefits you as much or more as it benefits those to whom you give. So number one, it's good for your health. Researchers at Johns Hopkins found that charitable givers experience reduce, reduced rates of stress and lower blood pressure compared to those who do not give. These health benefits do not apply, however, to the people who work for nonprofits. <laughs> Two, it will make you happy. There is abundant evidence that people who give more to others in both time and resources experience greater satisfaction in life than people who do not. Three, local giving protects your community. Nonprofit organizations respond faster to the needs of the community, and we do so at a fraction of the cost of government-run programs. I'm sorry to the table with the senators there. <laughs> For example, Chesapeake Charities operates on less than 5% overhead. Government-run agencies use 100% of your tax dollars. Four, giving is contagious. Giving spurs a ripple effect of generosity through a community. A study done at Harvard shows that when one person behaves generously, it inspires observers to behave generously later toward different people. That's remarkable. And five, it reduces your tax burden. Charitable contributions can reduce your tax burden at the end of the year. Now the folks in Washington have made this a little harder, but it's still possible if you itemize your deductions. In addition, Chesapeake Charities is able to offer a 25% reduction on Maryland income tax for any qualified donation through our Endow Maryland program. So you can talk to me about that later. So whether you volunteer your time, donate money to a charity, giving is much more than just an end of the year activity. So I challenge you to do your own research today. Watch the people who come up here on this stage and see if you don't think they're some of the happiest people you've ever seen. <laughs> then, give some thought to what kind of philanthropist do you want to be. And remember, Chesapeake Charities is here to help. So, with that, thank you. thank you. When we got this luncheon started in 2016, our first honoree was Governor Hogan, who had just battled cancer and led this state with incredible courage and um, tenacity. And so at that time, he didn't want a gift, but we named a scholarship after him, the Governor Larry Hogan Scholarship. And we focused this scholarship on students who are in med medical school who have done some cancer research. And um, today, from the governor's office, we have Gay Adams, who is the director of executive services in Governor Hogan's office. At the State House, Gay is tasked with fulfilling the governor's customer service promise, as well as streamlining office procedures to provide an efficient, positive, and productive constituent experience. And with that, I will ask Gay to come join us and present the scholarship winner. Hello. Thank you, everyone, for having me here today. It's an honor to be here in front of all these amazing people. I feel as though I need to step up my game. That was, that was very good. Uh, let me take these off so I can actually see. I am really delighted to represent Governor Hogan, who is unable to be here today. The governor does send his regrets and has asked me to extend his congratulations to all the honorees 
and to let you know that you will receive a citation from Governor Hogan along with the award that you receive from Chesapeake Charities later in the program. As Linda mentioned, the Governor Larry Hogan Scholarship was established in 2016. And when Governor Hogan was honored by Chesapeake Charities during the inaugural celebration of Charity Luncheon, two very promising medical students had received the scholarship award so far. And two honor oriums were awarded last year to highly qualified medical students whose research drew the attention of the scholarship committee. It is my honor to present an outstanding candidate for the 2019 Governor Larry Hogan Scholarship, Melanie Rebecki. Melanie. <laughs> Melanie is a fourth year student at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and the first person in her family to go to college. This achievement is a testament to Melanie's strong work ethic and her determination to succeed. After graduating college, Melanie worked in the oncology research department at Johns Hopkins University. She was impressed by the level of compassion displayed by the physician she worked with. But it was the resilience and strength of the patients facing devastating diagnoses that inspired Melanie to pursue her lifelong dream to become a physician. Professors at the University of Maryland School of Medicine describe Melanie as a mature, dedicated, and intellectually curious student who is routinely cited for her scholarship, professionalism, and humanity. Her peers say, Melanie has a remarkable level of compassion and empathy for her patients. And she strives to give each patient a voice and autonomy over their own health care. People notice that Melanie consistently works harder than anyone else, even when she's tired. But it is Melanie's warmth and genuine interest in her patients, <coughs> particularly with the newly diagnosed cancer patients, HIV patients with Opportunist, opportunistic infections in patients with substance abuse problems struggling with the social stigma that most accurately reflects Melanie's compassion and humanism. Please join me in congratulating Melanie Rebecca for being selected as this year's 2019 Governor Larry Hogan Scholarship recipient. First, I just want to thank Governor Hogan and Chesapeake Charities. Um, the last four years of med school have been challenging, but an extreme privilege. Um, and there are days that the weight of human suffering is overwhelming, and it's people like you that inspire me to keep working hard and go forward. So thank you all. You know, it is so inspirational. That is the key word for this luncheon. And it just um, is uh, an emotional experience. Um, Melanie is the first person in her family to even go to college. And um, she's making it into a tremendous success. And her dad is here. And I just know her family is so, so very proud of her. And we are all proud of you too, Melanie. It's my pleasure to introduce Rick Springer. Many of you may know Rick. Rick Springer is a senior vice president and the commercial banking manager of First National Bank. Prior to joining First National seven months ago, Rick led BB&T's banking activities in Anne Arundel County, Southern Maryland, and the Eastern Shore for the past 21 years. He's been an active community volunteer for many years and has served on the board of directors of Anne Arundel Medical Center Foundation, Annapolis Wellness House, and on the audit committee of the Annapolis Yacht Club. Rick and his wife, Jill, will be co-chairing this year's Anne Arundel Medical Center's 
Denim and Diamonds Bash. That is a big annual fundraiser. We invited Rick Springer here to present our very first award as he has volunteered alongside our honoree and knows her very well. Rick? Thank you for that very nice introduction. I appreciate that, Audrey. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. All right. Well, it's truly a pleasure and an honor for me to be here today to introduce Chesapeake Charities 2019 Volunteer of the Year, Claudia Boldiga. Claudia and her husband Randy are good friends of ours, and both my wife and I volunteer with them on behalf of Anne Arundel Medical Center Foundation. So I've had the privilege of seeing Claudia in action and know firsthand what an amazing woman she is. In preparation for this introduction, we did some research into Claudia's past. <laughs> and Randy, you and I should talk after this. No, and it won't surprise those of you who know her to learn that Claudia began fundraising as a child. Friends from Pennsylvania, where she grew up, recall her enthusiasm for car washes, booster club functions, those types of activities. Even then, Claudia was a natural born leader with an uncanny ability to draw people to her and get them involved. Students who were shy or reluctant to participate quickly realized what most of us in the business community in this region have come to know today. It is futile to resist her requests. <laughs> Over the years, Claudia's volunteer efforts have followed her heart. When Zach and Nate Boldega attended school in Severna Park and Annapolis, Claudia raised money for academic programs for their schools. True to form, the year Claudia chaired Severn School's Centennial Committee, the event had the highest attendance and participation from parents and community partners in the school's history. In 2016, Claudia joined Bosom Buddies Charities after losing her mother to cancer and watching her mother-in-law battle and survive the disease. Bosom Buddies promotes breast cancer awareness encourages early detection, supports treatment, and celebrates healing. Proceeds from the organization's signature event, a black tie ball, provide funding for the purchase of life-saving breast cancer detection and treatment equipment that benefits residents on both sides of the bay. And for many years, Claudia has held leadership roles within Anne Arundel Medical Center Foundation. And that's where I've come to know Claudia the best. She is a woman who is determined, hardworking, and next to impossible to say no to. Claudia's level of involvement with AAMC requires a tremendous commitment of time and energy. She pours her heart into everything she does, and nothing stops her once she has agreed to be involved. Since 2014, she and Randy have served as the founding chairs of Anne Arundel Medical Center's Denim and Diamonds Bash. In this role, Claudia's expertise as a seasoned event planner has helped raise millions of dollars for vital mental health and substance abuse programs provided by Anne Arundel Medical Center. We often tend to measure a volunteer's contributions in terms of the dollars raised or hours spent on the job. I can assure you Claudia's volunteer work has raised millions of dollars. But that isn't where the greatest value lies. Claudia's contributions change lives. She truly makes a difference. The programs supported by Denim and Diamonds Bash help those in our community facing mental health and substance abuse challenges. Whether it's a parent in a Pathways Family Wellness Workshop who is coming to terms with their son or daughter's addiction, or if it's a patient who needs help transitioning to a healthy life of recovery and healing, 
or a survivor who receives mental health treatment and art therapy so that suicide is no longer an option. All of these lives are touched by the kindness and dedication of a woman they may never meet. So for her compassion and her service to others, we're honoring her today. But before we do that officially, Linda has a few remarks that she'd like to share as well. Thank you, Rick. These don't come from me. Claudia has another son, Zach, and he's way far away in Bali, but he sent these remarks. So here's Zach's message. There are a lot of stories I can share with you that capture the often selfless attitude of my evil, wicked stepmom, as she's dubbed herself. For years, during the fallout and remediation of my parents' divorce, my parents lived in two separate school districts. In order to make this work, Claudia woke up at the crack of dawn on many days for many years and drove my brother and I 30 minutes to school, then picked us up again later in the day. It was during these rides every morning and every afternoon that we really grew close. And it was also this ritual that led to Claudia becoming more involved in volunteering at our schools. It wasn't long before she was working at the front desks of our school and eventually running the show. <laughs> My brother and I are, and our schools undoubtedly had a lot to be thankful for. And it wasn't just us that viewed Claudia as such an important part of our lives. The dogs of the Boldega household are first class citizens and live decadently to say the least. Animals have always been a big part of Claudia's life and you won't have to spend but a minute at our house to be stormed by multiple dogs, coated in dog hair, and see the patron saint of tennis balls painting hanging over the sink. It's easy to see the care that goes into taking care of the dogs every day. And it's this caring aspect of Claudia that's led to her becoming involved in so many volunteer projects over the years. This all started over a decade ago at our schools and has grown into the wider communities of Denim and Diamonds Ball and Bosom Buddies, where thousands in the community are reached. I'm glad she's getting recognition as Volunteer of the Year after all this hard work. And thank you all for taking the time to come out today and celebrate her accomplishments. It really means a lot to me. So once again, for her compassion and her service to others, please help me in honoring Claudia Boldega as Volunteer of the Year. I knew Rick was going to do such a great speech, I don't think I would have even had to write anything. <laughs> Thank you, Rick, for that amazing, amazing words. Uh, Linda Kohler, the Chesapeake Charities, for this incredible recognition. I also want to thank Jan Wood and the entire Anne Arundel Medical Center Foundation for a glowing nomination which brought tears to my eyes. You know, Chesapeake Bay Beach Club is a special place for me and Randy, as we both were married here together. So thank you to the entire staff for hosting such a beautiful event. We really appreciate it. I am honored, humbled, excited, thrilled, but most of all grateful for this award. I could not do the work that I do without the loving support of my family. To my husband, Randy, who's crying in the corner, by the way. Um, <laughs> I love you to the moon and back for always being my, by my side and giving me such a beautiful life. The running joke here is that Randy always says that I'm the busiest non-salaried employee that he even knows. 
And when you, the other joke is, is that when he ever needs socks or anything like personal, he would actually ask me a hundred times, I wouldn't get it. And then he would say, yeah, don't worry. I'll go ahead and email Jan Wood. I'll ask her to ask you to get them and then you'll get it for him. <laughs> to my incredible boys, Nate, who's here with us today, was a little bit shy, didn't want to read what his brother said, and Zach, who fill my life with love and laughs, and I am truly one evil, one, not evil, oh my god, one lucky, <laughs> one lucky evil wicked stepmom. I'm so proud of the men that they have become. When I was younger, my mom was always helping people, whether it be finding a car mechanic for someone's car, or finding a husband or a wife for random people, by the way. She was a great matchmaker. Or just being there to listen to someone's problems, everyone reached out to her and she would always make the time for them. Her love of people and helping others always was a huge impact on my life. I'd like to think that I took the best qualities of both her and my father. I know that both of them are smiling down on me today. I'm extremely fortunate to have so many family and friends here today to help me celebrate. <laughs> my evil, wicked stepmother, who I love dearly, came in from Maine to, hear, to be here with us today. My Aunt Mims, who drove all the way from Pennsylvania to come share this day. I love you. And to my dear friend Samantha Nathan, who by the way, I had to write this into the speech just two seconds ago, because she sent me a text this morning telling me that she's really proud of me, but she lives in Pennsylvania and she wasn't gonna be here, and she is right over there. <laughs> she's my high school friend, so I was shocked. I'm also fortunate to have my mother and father-in-law here, along with my two sisters-in-law, my niece, and our special aunt and uncle from New Jersey. As I look in the audience today, I see many of my friends, which means so much to me. The running joke that they have <laughs> is that the best way to hang out with me is to join the many committees or organizations I'm involved in, and that truly does mean a lot to me and warms my heart. Throughout the years, as you know, Oh, wait. Throughout the years, as you have already heard, I would volunteer to all my, to my son's different schools. You can imagine how bummed I was when they went to college, and I guess it's frowned upon for your mom to go with them to college. <laughs> During this time, I also became very involved with Anne Arundel Medical Center by helping them with their galas as their auction chair or other various roles. It was a perfect fit and still is. Unfortunately, many of us here today know someone or have been affected themselves by either mental illness, drug addiction, or cancer. It is sad but true, and that is why I strive to make a difference in our community, and I adore the work that I do for both Anne Arundel Medical Center, Denim and Diamonds, and Bosom Buddies Charities. Denim and Diamonds is a wonderful event, as you've already heard. It's um, with a huge purpose, though. This event has been very focused for the past four years by shining a light on mental illness and drug addiction. The funds raised for this <laughs> night, oh my God, oh my God, they stuck together, are extremely, extremely important. They help support care so that AAMC can meet the growing need in our community. Randy and I are extremely, extremely proud of this event. A few years ago, I was asked to sit on the board of Bosom Buddies Charities that was started by its founder, Susan Ponchuk, many years ago. This charity is close to my heart as well, as my mother had passed away from cancer a while back. Two years ago, though, when I learned that my sweet mother-in-law was diagnosed with breast cancer, Hi. <laughs> Bosom Buddies took on a whole new meaning for me. I didn't think that would get me, to be honest with you. <laughs> Thankfully, she received excellent care at Anne Arundel Medical Center, and she is here with us today. Bosom Buddies Charities' mission is simple, as Rick had said, to promote breast cancer awareness, to encourage early detection, to support treatment, and of course, to celebrate healing. We are celebrating our 13th anniversary and have raised over $2 million. We have several events a year, as well as our Bosom Buddies Ball. As you can see, this charity has really made a difference throughout our community. It helps our loved ones who are fighting the fight of their lives. 
In short, in short, right? That sounds funny. Huh? <laughs> in short, I am a people person, and I love the people I work with on both of these phenomenal charities. I admire the strength of all, these, all the people and their families that we touch along the way. The truth is, we all can make a difference, and that's really what it's all about, isn't it? I want you all to know that I accept this award with so much gratitude, love, and appreciation. Thank you. Now our next presenter actually received the Volunteer of the Year Award last year. Mark Freestate is now retired, but he's still one of the busiest people you'd ever meet. He serves on the St. Martin's Ministries Board, and he's also on the board, um, oh my goodness, uh, of a school uh, <laughs> that, that I've forgotten. Gunston, thank you, Mark, thank you, Mark. So without further ado, let me bring Mark Freestate up to the stage. Thank you, Linda. I was um, interested in your opening statistics about uh, happy people. I was just talking to my table mate here, Tom Helfenbein. We are, a, a, you want to call Harvard and let them know they're two very happy old retired guys here today. <laughs> <laughs> just let them know. Thank you again for that warm introduction. Um, it certainly is my pleasure and a great honor to be here this year to present the award for nonprofit of the year to Compass Regional Hospice and to celebrate the wonderful contribution they make to our community. Compass Regional Hospice was formed in 1985 by a group of caring individuals who recognized the need for compassionate of life end of life care. At the time, there was no program of this type in Queen Anne's County. So family members had no choice but to become caregivers when a loved one was diagnosed with a terminal illness. Originally formed as Hospice of Queen Anne's by an all-volunteer group, the organization grew steadily under the leadership of its first director, Mildred Barnett. <laughs> Mildred was a nurse who had cared for her own father at the end of his life and knew firsthand how important support for families was during the difficult trans transition from life to death. She became an expert on hospice care, participating in trainings whenever they were held, and ensuring that quality was built into every program or service that hospice honored. Mildred also had a knack for hiring and convincing a young nurse, Heather Guerrero, to join the staff at a time when hospice care was a tremendous challenge for someone just out of college. From day one, the quality of the organization's leadership has been its greatest strength. Board members like Kathy Teotis and Tom Helfenbein have championed the cause and been steadfast in their desire to grow and strengthen this organization. Kathy became board chair in 2014 and the, during that time, Hospice of Queen Anne's became a regional provider of hospice care, serving the needs of patients and their families in Queen Anne's, Kent, and Caroline counties. As executive director, Heather has led Compass Regional Hospice through an incredible period of growth, adding facilities, hiring staff, and developing new programs to meet the growing needs of the community. Thank you, Kathy and Heather, for your dedication to this cause. <laughs> I have the podium. <laughs> and it's rare, but I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, 
And I would be remiss if I did not recognize the unsung heroes of hospice, its trained volunteers, as well as the core group of community leaders who have invested their time, chaired the capital campaigns, donated land, and helped secure funding. I would direct your attention to some of whom who are here with us today at table number three. <laughs> Compass is a regional provider of exemplary hospice care and grief support services. Guided by their mission to provide comprehensive and compassionate care, staff and volunteers serve their patients in private residences, skilled nursing facilities, or Compass's own residential centers in Centerville and Chesterdale. Grief support services are offered to families of all patients as well as to children and adults in the community who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Each summer, Camp New Dawn combines the essential ingredients of summer camp, fun, food, and friendship with a retreat for children, teens, and families who have lost a loved one. Many of these services are provided free of charge. Compass is presently in the middle of a successful campaign, capital campaign, to expand its service even further into our community, which in and of itself is a testament to the growing need, needs that it provides. For all of these remarkable accomplishments and the visionary leadership and commitment to excellence of its board and staff, please join me in honoring Compass Regional Hospice as Nonprofit of the Year. Now, Heather. to say a few words. I want to start by thanking Mark Free State for his commitment to our organization as well as the kind words to introduce our organization as nonprofit of the year. There are so many wonderful causes to support in our region, many made possible by the support of Chesapeake Charities. So thank you, Chesapeake Charities. to be singled out and recognized as nonprofit of the year. Very grateful for your support and belief in our mission. So many people in the community have or will be touched personally by our services, serious illness care, hospice care, and grief support. We are privileged to be considered a valued resource during difficult times. Those coming to terms with a terminal illness, those that have lost a loved one under tragic circumstances, and those struggling to support their aging parents. To sum up our mission, we aim to improve the quality of life of our patients and their families. Time is greatly valued, and by taking a comprehensive approach to care, we can make their time as easy and peaceful as possible. 2020, we celebrate our 35th year in service. We hope you will join us here on January 31st for our annual gala. Thank you very much. I am Jody Gray and I am on the board of Chesapeake Charities and I was asked to introduce the Chesapeake Women's Network as philanthropist of the year and when my husband and I first came to the Eastern Shore more than 10 years ago within two weeks of arriving I attended a CWN meeting uh, so that I could network with women in the area and they've been my tribe ever since so I'm very honored today to uh, present this award to them. Chesapeake Women's Network got its start in 1986 when Marsha Borgern, a local realtor, decided Queen Anne's County needed a networking group just for women. 
Networking was just coming into fashion, and there were a couple of business women in the area, but there weren't any groups for professional women who were interested in enrichment and professional growth. One year after the group was formed, there were more than 50 members, and by 2005, CWN was 100 business women strong. CWN's founding members were movers and shakers who came together to share successes, learn from each other's mistakes, stimulate business opportunities, and support the community. Meetings took place in Annapolis and then here in Queen Anne's County. Several of today's members actually attended meetings with their mothers and stepmothers before becoming members themselves. Philanthropy came natural to these women, and for many years they collected food, clothing, household items, and toys so that battered women and their children could get a fresh start. Lynn Knight connected the group with the Midshore Council on Family Violence and a list of items needed by women and children staying at the shelter in Caroline County would be shared during CWN meetings. At one time there was an entire room at the Midshore facility in Denton that housed donations from CWN members. It was through this experience that CWN members began to see the power of education to change lives. So it was natural that they created a scholarship fund for women who were motivated to continue their education but lacked the financial resources to do so. The CWN scholarship was established at Chesapeake Charities in 2007 and nearly 100 women have been given the opportunity to secure the education or technical training that they need to enhance their workforce skills. At first, the scholarships were small, ranging from $284 to $2,000. But as the organization grew, their ability to provide larger scholarships grew as well. To date, scholarships have been awarded for degree and technical training programs at 22 colleges and universities in seven states. But the majority of CWN scholarship recipients have chosen to pursue their degrees close to home at Chesapeake College. CWN scholarships have been awarded to single mothers, wives caring for a sick spouse, abused women trying to break the cycle of dependence, and them, those women simply wanting to increase their earning ability to better support their families. Many of these women have worked full-time jobs, maintained their homes, and cared for families while attending school. Kelly Iannucci of Stevensville was one of the CWN's first scholarship recipients. She enrolled in Chesapeake College in 2000, 2007 to pursue a degree in nursing. After completing her coursework at Chesapeake, Kelly transferred to Johns Hopkins University and received a second and third CWN scholarship to help complete her bachelor's degree in science and nursing. Upon graduation, Kelly was quickly hired by Johns Hopkins as, an emergency, uh, as a pediatric emergency room nurse. She also worked part-time at the urgent care facility on Kent Island to pay off the rest of her school loans and to give back to her local community. The scholarships Kelly received from CWN made all the difference in her ability to complete her education. Although she wasn't working at the time, her husband earned too much money for her to qualify for assistance, but not enough for them to afford the extra expense of college while they were raising young children. Today, Kelly is a full-time nurse in a pediatric office in Odenton. Another CWN scholarship recipient, Kelly Knopp, also asked if she could thank the members of CWN gathered here today in her own words. Dear CWN, I want to thank you for the scholarship I received from you when I was beginning my second career and going back to nursing school. At the time I was getting ready to start school, my husband became ill and we lost his income. I wasn't sure I was still going to be able to complete my dream of becoming a nurse. Receiving your scholarship was extremely helpful and allowed me to fulfill my dream. I currently work at Davida Dialysis as a regional clinical service manager. I am responsible for the patient care at 17 dialysis centers on the Eastern Shore and Annapolis area. This career allowed me to make a difference in so many people's lives. The dialysis centers I cover have some of the best clinical outcomes in the nation. I am so grateful to be part of the improving the lives of so many people in our community. This is truly why I wanted to become a nurse, to make a difference in people's lives. And thank you for helping me to achieve my goals. Sincerely, Kelly Knopp. There are now hundreds of these stories, which are poignant testimonies to the invincible spirit of women and the importance of lending a hand. Eva Stoops, over at table number 10, past president of CWN, puts it this way. When women work, 
magic happens. Please help me in recognizing Chesapeake Women's Network as our philanthropist of the year for empowering women to pursue their dreams. First and foremost, thank every person in this room for this honor for CWN. Uh, I, I dragged Heather up here with me because it represents something about CWN to me. It's not just me, it's all of us, okay? It's every board member, it's every member, it's every person that attends our fundraiser. Uh, it's about all of us working together and the difference that we've made in, in so many lives. And it's not just about, um, the scholarships for us either because when we come together we all talk about all the things we're doing in the community besides the scholarships and we we back each other up what do you need what you want what are you going to do what are we going to help each other with it is such a wonderful spirit that we have um, I will say in 2020 we will reach that hundred thousand dollar mark and I'm really excited about that um, and that is a lot of people putting being at events, putting their part in, doing something for the women that really could use our help. And I'm so honored that of the stories that we hear every year and the people who work on the scholarship committee and, and make the consideration for who we're gonna give the money to. So that's my next thing is that if you know someone, a young woman that is over the age of 22 and needs scholarship money, please, go to our website, send them to us. We want to help them, we want to give them money, we want to change their future. And that, that's the thing is, is that it's really not about the dollar amount, it is about the change that we're making in the community, one person at a time. The things, the connections that we're making at our events, one conversation at a time, and the, the ripple effects that that has. I'm really honored to be a part of CWN. I do consider these ladies to be my tribe. Um, and you know, we have you know, an event every month, and I would love to have you join us. Uh, and again, thank you so much. I told you it would be uplifting. Um, we have citations for each of the awardees from our elected officials. I want to recognize our Senator Steve Hershey. Steve Hershey is here with us. Also, we have our delegate Steve Ahrens. He's also here to present citations. We also have citations from Governor Hogan and also from Senator Ben Cardin. And they will be presented to the awardees at the conclusion. And what I would like to do is ask um, them, uh, the awardees to please go to the um, ante room and the senator and the delegate will meet you there and present and we'll have photographs. Um, we also have um, another um, award to make. And um, Jody, it's behind that chair. If you'd bring that white envelope up. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask uh, Senator Hershey and Delegate Aarons to please come up for this one. Um, this is a special one that um, <clears throat> I was told uh, by Linda Kohler that we didn't have time to do this. And Gay Adams, did you also come up, please? And I'm going to ask. Um, I've known Steve Hershey since um, We don't have to start that. You know what I'm going to tell? No. I was his den mother. <laughs> I have stories. <laughs> anyway. I'm, which one of you would like to call the recipient up? And uh, Senator Hershey, would you like to uh, do this one? Um, Is this a surprise, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> you want me to break the surprise? Yeah, you, you break. No, no, I'm not going to break. You break the surprise. Okay. 
Well, um, well, first of all, thank you all very much for coming out today. I um, wanted to also share what Audrey had mentioned earlier by thanking the uh, sponsors, um, the uh, board of directors, and all the staff of Chesapeake Charities for doing so much work to help all of these nonprofits be able to, uh, to change the lives of many through their, their uh, works and their projects. So um, in light of that, we have a very special award. And um, I will just say that um, all three of us have citations from the uh, Maryland Senate, the House of Delegates, and the governor um, in recognition of Chesapeake Charities' 15 years of successful operations generating more than $25 million for communities on the Eastern Shore and throughout the state. And we want to recognize Linda Kohler for her efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. That's all. <laughs> thank you very much. It's hard to surprise her because she runs the show. Um, anyway, before we adjourn, I would just like to say again, Linda did mention it in her remarks at the beginning. It may have passed you, but I want to just reiterate it. We operate with overhead of less administrative costs of less than 5%. There are not many nonprofits in this country or anywhere that operate at less than 5%. It is an amazing testimony to our staff and our volunteers that we are able to accomplish what we do with that kind of a percentage of overhead. And uh, it's something that we're committed to, we're determined to keep it at that, and uh, we've been extremely successful in that over the years, and uh, that's why I feel so privileged to be a part of Chesapeake Charities. Um, and I would like to make one final appeal. Inside your program is a donor card, and uh, if you like what you saw here today, We'd greatly appreciate a contribution of any size. Every penny helps, every dollar helps. There's no limit to the amount you can give, but there's also no limit to the good that we can do together. I want to thank you all so much for being here today. I look forward to seeing you all next year. And help us spread the word that charity happens here. Charity happens through Chesapeake Charities Foundation. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> <laughs>